How's it going everyone? Miguel Quiles here. Today I want to teach you guys about using ND filters with a strobe. Something that I started my career doing and it's a little tricky but I'm going to walk you through everything that you need to know to make that happen. Alright, so before we get started I want to introduce you to my model for this video, Caitlin. Uh, she is an awesome model here in Orlando, Florida. And uh, so here's the thing. I want to show you guys what happens when you try to shoot uh, wide open with your lens and you try to use a flash. Let's talk about our exposures here because we actually have two exposures that we have to work with when you're using a strobe. The first exposure is uh, what's being controlled by your camera. So your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO is going to control your ambient light. So that's the light that you see from the sun, uh, which is going to control basically the light in the background. So those settings right now, in order for me to get a decent exposure uh, for the background, I need to be somewhere around one one thousandth of a second, f1.8 and ISO 100. That exposure actually looks really good for the background. So I'm going to take that shot with my strobe off. I'll put that on the screen so you guys can see what it looks like. Now, that shot actually exposure wise isn't terrible, right? If you didn't want to use a uh, strobe, you totally could do it at available light settings, right? But being able to use a strobe gives you a lot of flexibility. You could use different kinds of modifiers, make the light hard, make it soft. You could do anything you want with a strobe. So once you've dialed in that ambient setting, now what we're going to do is add that strobe to basically light our model. Now we run into a problem because at one one thousandth of a second, your remote and your flash would have to be compatible with what's called high speed sync. If you don't have high speed sync, you are basically going to get a black bar across your image if you try to use this one one thousandth shutter speed because it is above the camera's native flash sync speed. Most digital cameras are going to be anywhere from one one sixtieth of a second to maybe one two fiftieth of a second. In the case of this Alpha One, it actually goes to one four hundredth of a second, which is not um, common. There's not too many cameras out there that uh, are not like a, a medium format camera that allow you to do that. Um, but this one does. So with that being said, what we're having to do is we're going to have to bring our shutter speed down to one one sixtieth of a second. And I'm going to take this shot because this is where our flash and our camera could sync and talk to one another if we didn't have high speed sync. Let's take that shot. So playing back the photo, I could see that I'm more than five stops overexposed if I have my shutter speed at 1 1 60th of a second, which presents a problem because with most flashes, that's the only way to be able to sync your camera and your flash together without actually seeing the shutter curtain in the photo. So what do we do? The solution is to use a ND filter. So I happen to have one here in my pocket. Um, this is a brand new ND filter that's made by Freewell and these are magnetic, so super handy. So this will screw onto the front of our camera. And this is actually a two to five stop variable ND filter. So as I twist this, I could actually make it darker if I need it to be darker uh, so that that baseline exposure will be the way we want it to be. So I'm going to turn off my strobe. And now, because I can't go up with my shutter speed without using high speed sync, I'm going to use my ND filter to bring down the overall exposure instead of using the shutter speed to do that. So let's see. Right now, I can bring this to about a four. I'll show you what that baseline exposure is. Yeah, so at four, it's showing I'm just under one stop under exposed. What's great about using the ND filter is that if I want to darken the entire scene to almost make it look like it's nighttime, I could do that. Uh, so the variable ND filter gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to really have control over your ambient exposure. So now with that F1.8, 1 160th of a second, ISO 100, four stop ND, now we have the right exposure. We're going to go ahead and turn on our flash. And we're going to build this up. I have my reflector with me. I might use it. I might not. Um, so now we're going to light Caitlin with a four foot Octa and we're going to have all kinds of control. Let's start shooting.
So with using an ND filter, you're able to really control the ambient light. And I really switched between four and five stops of ND with these uh, Freewell filters to basically bring down the background exposure. And then I bring in my strobe, which for those that might be wondering, I was at a five, 5.8 for my power. Um, so I, I have plenty more to go. If I needed to make it even brighter, I totally could do that. But at 5.8, getting a great exposure. But what's great is I could control the background exposure, control the exposure on my model, um, and still be within the sync speed limits of a typical digital camera. So um, that's how you use a variable ND filter if you're shooting outdoors. I'm gonna do a separate video showing you guys how to use high speed sync with a strobe shooting outdoors. Then I'm gonna do a video showing you the differences between high speed sync and using a variable ND because they are, uh, it's different. The results that you get from each one are gonna be a little bit different. So let me know which one you wanna see first in the comments section below. Uh, while you're there, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I have new videos coming out all the time. Also make sure you give Caitlin a follow on uh, Instagram and on her social media. Uh, she'll be in a couple of other videos here on the channel as well. Make sure you check those out. Before you go, make sure that you check out this video that you see here on the screen so you can learn more about shooting with off-camera flash. I'll see you there.